I mean, how could we not start this episode by announcing that famed Twitter reply guy, Orenthal O.J. Simpson, has passed away. R.I.P. Bozo. And that marks an end to one of the wildest, literally most insane and well-known real-life dramas in popular American culture. We'll try to keep this brief because we are aware that some of you either weren't alive or were just too young to fully grasp the sheer magnitude of the murder and subsequent chase, trial, and then just the aftermath of his entire life. Uh, different court cases, uh, turning into a reply guy. Yeah, I would say the OJ trial is probably the milestone that separates millennials from Gen Z. I think so too. And it was also, as we'll say, like the biggest televised news event up until that point that was a constantly covered thing for a year. Yeah. Uh, but the entire dark chapter was, it was inescapable. It was one of the first examples of nonstop round the clock news coverage from the second OJ jumped into the backseat of that white Bronco to the nearly year long trial to the moment when he was found not guilty by the jury, despite clearly being the one who did it. I mean, it was such a big deal that teachers wheeled the TV set into classrooms at school so that everyone could watch together. Uh, my teachers did not do that, but on the day of the verdict, the teacher let everyone know, and she was very pissed. Yeah. So Ugh. yeah, let's not mince words. O.J. Simpson absolutely killed his wife and Ron Goldman in a horrifically brutal way and got away with it, almost entirely scot-free, thanks to one of the most expensive legal defense teams in history, alongside a deep and justified resentment of the local police department and his status as a nearly godlike figure among fans of football his slapstick comedy in those naked gun movies, and all those car rental company commercials. You can't even rent a Hertz car anymore without thinking about OJ killing his wife. Yeah, but he did absolutely get away with murder, uh, and like, it is an interesting case because um, you can, equally, equally valid are the opinions, the verdict was right, but, or the verdict was wrong, but, mm -hmm. because uh, the trial was a fucking shit show, and uh, the LAPD at that time was basically the KKK. So, yep. anyway, yeah, well, later on, after dodging that bullet, he did face financial penalties for his actions through a civil trial where he was found liable for those deaths, and then he would eventually end up in prison much later for a completely separate crime where he was involved in the armed robbery of sports mem memorabilia, his own sports memorabilia, yeah. OJ memorabilia, that he claimed had actually been stolen from him. Uh, he would serve just under a decade in prison for that armed robbery case. And upon release, he moved, of course, to Florida. And bizarrely, he started posting like reply guy videos on Twitter where he would give his takes on current events. Hey, and, all uh, my lovely fans, OJ here with the latest response to whatever's happening in the world. And his account was fascinating. I was an instant follow because, um, yes, this- It, it is a surreal thing it's to rare, witness. It's yeah. rare you get the opportunity to stare directly into the darkness that is uh, the eyes of a complete and total fucking sociopath. Yeah. As they- A murderer. A, yeah. As they put on uh, their show of pretending to be a human being. Yeah, it was, again, fascinating in a kind of morbid way. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, he's a very charming guy. But yeah, he moved to Florida because <laughs> apparently in Florida Taxes. they can't yeah, garnish. A civil uh, forfeiture, yeah. yeah. So it's hard to even convey how wild the entire story is because every generation since just knew him as a guy who got away with murder. But at the time it all went down, it was the tail end of a monumental career with an undeniable mark on college and professional sports. The only thing comparable would be if today, Tom Brady, LeBron James, or Messi did something equally as heinous. Honestly, if you, for whatever reason, need to get fully caught up on this, including all of the necessary context for how he was viewed by people, how he got away with it, and the general political climate in Los Angeles at the time, also the clear and substantial evidence tying him to the mur murders, please, please watch the extremely long but fascinating and highly detailed documentary series OJ Made in America because it will blow your mind. They don't even get to like the murder and trial until two or three episodes it's, in. The whole thing's like, what, 10 hours long? But yes, they. it is necessary because the first episode or two uh, completely does the backstory yeah. of his his sports history, his movies, and then what the LAPD was up to in, um, I don't know, the decades leading up to this case. Yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, you see a lot of uh, Netflix documentaries that are like 10 hours long and you watch it and you're like, that could have been 
No, this Three is hours. necessary. Yeah, this one is jam packed. It justifies its runtime. Yes, and again, uh, uh, as we all know, context is important in everything, and and this gives all of that in a way that I. It's hard to say about any other documentary that I've seen in recent years. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Uh, just interesting social social sort of place that he found for himself. Uh, the line that always stuck out to me was um, he was asked by guys like Muhammad Ali and Jim Brown to like participate in civil he rights stuff. Do that. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I'm not black. I'm, I'm OJ. OJ. Yeah. Uh, also, if you like trash TV and you want to get a, a decent <laughs> dramatization of it. God damn it. Uh, but more specifically, just a dramatization of the trial. You want to see century? John Travolta in the craziest wig he's ever worn? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then the FX show American Crime Story. It Look, it was entertaining. But you will be missing out on a ton of very important context as it focuses primarily on the general circus of the trial and those involved. Also, for good measure, make sure you watch any of the many compilations of Norm MacDonald reporting on the OJ trial during the trial and during his time on Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update because he was one of the only public figures out there uh, taking OJ to task for doing exactly what he did, murdering two people. Uh, anyways, RIP Bozo. OJ went out doing what he does best, lying, because on his most recent social media posts, he is talking about how he is in great health despite actively dying yeah, of cancer. he's like, hospice? Who, I don't know who's spreading these rumors about me dying, but uh, I'll it, be back out on the golf course in two or three weeks. It is actually crazy to see those videos. Now, let's just show tiny clips from them here. Thank you to all the people who reached out to me. Uh, uh, my health is good. I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues. Uh, but, hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be uh, back on that golf course, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospital. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald C. Can't trust the media. Yeah, um, just bizarre. But with that out of the way, let's talk about another alleged criminal who has so far gotten away with their alleged crimes, despite evidence continuing to mount against them. And this time, we're talking about Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who is still, I guess, the target of a House Ethics Committee investigation relating to his, um, shall we say, improper relationships with what appear to have been minors mm -hmm. that he may or may not have been transporting across state lines while allegedly paying them for sex. Yeah. Which is illegal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. His friend and accomplice in the sex trafficking case, a local tax collector named Joel Greenberg, was famously indicted and took a plea deal for his involvement and was later sentenced to 11 years in prison. Uh, went down, reached out to uh, Roger Stone, Matt Gates. He was tossed to the wolves. Yeah, they reached up while he was drowning and they gave him a high five. Yeah. Thanks for taking one for the team. So criminal charges were not brought against Gates, but the House Ethics Committee investigation into his actions is still ongoing. And after participating in the ousting of former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, more people are coming out of the woodwork to share their personal experiences with Gates and highlight his actions behind closed doors. And that's, that's the thing, folks. Uh, the Republicans, you can be as crazy as you want, as long as that crazy is facing... Out yeah. and not in. Mm -hmm. Madison Cawthorn. Yep. Cautionary tale. Yeah. You keep that shit in the circle. Matt Gates. Uh, he's trying to keep it in a circle, but a circle of the party that is uh, very crazy. A subcircle. Yes. Uh, during a recent speaking engagement at Georgetown University, Kevin McCarthy didn't hold back on the accusations, but still kept a legal safe distance from outright uh, pinning it on him. He told the crowd bluntly. I'll give you the truth as to why I'm not speaker. Because one person, a member of Congress, wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17-year-old. <laughs> Damn, Kevin! Uh, an ethics complaint that started before I ever became speaker. And that's illegal. And I'm not going to get in the middle of it. Now, <laughs> did he do it or not? I don't know. But ethics was looking at it. <laughs> There's other people in jail because of it, and he wanted me to influence it. Damn, Kevin's so much sassier than I would have guessed. He's yeah. Like, I don't know anything about that, though. Uh, but uh, th <laughs> that is a crime, and people have gone to prison for it. And there's an investigation, but I'm not going to get in the middle of it. Yeah, that's none of my business. Uh, it, it, saying that at a speaking event at a university <laughs> in front of a crowd of people. Oh, that's awesome. Uh -huh. So Gates would later respond to the statement, denying the accusations entirely, adding, Kevin is a liar. 
which actually is why he isn't speaker. Just ask any of the 224 people who voted to remove him. And that's probably not entirely accurate, either because a few months back, the Daily Beast reported on the fact that colleagues of Gates's were like, oh yeah, he absolutely led the charge against Speaker McCarthy because he wouldn't help him out on the ethic, uh, ethics probe. Uh, here's yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, here's more from uh, the Daily Beast reporting back in January. According to private correspondence reviewed by the Daily Beast, Gates indicated to a friend that his efforts to undercut, isolate, and ultimately remove McCarthy was indeed payback for the ethics probe. In the communications, Gates singled out McCarthy individually for reviving an ethics committee probe against him, and he indicated that his animus towards McCarthy was over that investigation. Other Republican congressional sources told the Daily Beast that Gates also acknowledged his revenge motive behind closed doors. In one instance over the summer, Gates relayed to a group of colleagues that his push to remove McCarthy was a direct response to the ethics investigation. He specifically blamed McCarthy for the return of the probe, according to two sources familiar with the conversation. A senior GOP congressional staffer separately told the Daily Beast that he had also heard Gates lay the ethics probe at McCarthy's feet. I've heard him complain about Kevin because of it, the staffer said. This aide also confirmed that Gates connected the probe to his rally to remove McCarthy. And the latest in this long saga is a very extensive and interesting profile on Gates in The Atlantic, which goes into great detail regarding Gates' life from high school to politics to becoming a quote-unquote firebrand during the Trump years by appearing on any live news segment that he could in order to comment on hot-button issues like athletes kneeling during the anthem. And they uh, point out that that was like his big first push through national TV appearances. Yeah. Was he was the one that came out and, and said, uh-uh. Not kneeling for the anthem, and I'm, sure, I'm not going to put up with it. I'm sure the footage of him doing that, what, five, six years ago, is unrecognizable. One of my favorite things to do randomly anytime this guy comes up in an episode that I'm editing is just go to Google Images and type in Matt Gates and just sort of scroll around. This man's entire, like, facial structure, his hair, everything has changed, like, three or four times. Well, he's he is the, unrecognizable. Uh, if you look at him, like, ten years ago, he's just, like, this sort of fat, doughy, Midwestern-looking dude. Mm -hmm. And then, about halfway between then and now, he turns into this, like, uh, surgical, like, uh, Max Headroom Chad-looking dude. And yeah. now he's, like, somewhere else in the middle. He's got the, uh, uh, what is it, the, the shots they put in your face to make your skin tight? But it, like, drags your eyebrows up. Yes. Yeah. Hello, it is I, Matt Gates. Uh, anyways, within the profile, though, there are more details about the reactions from fellow Republicans and others in Washington amidst the criminal accusations. And here are a few of the more important bits of information, though, again, the entire profile is a fascinating read and is always linked below so that you can read it in full. One claim held that Gates' friend, the Florida tax collector Joel Greenberg, had recruited women online and had sex with them before referring them to Gates, who slept with them too. But the most serious allegation was that Gates had had sex with a girl under the age of 18 and had flown her to the Bahamas for a vacation. By the time Gates proposed to his now wife, Ginger Lucky, the FBI had reportedly confiscated his phone. That's Palmer Lucky's sister. Yeah, the guy who way. invented the Oculus. And who now, uh, who, who now is, uh, he's a military contractor selling, yeah. uh, like, missiles. He... <laughs> It's terrifying. His company invented like a missile that can, that's basically a drone. Like a wow. single use missile that can go up and then like fly around for like 12 hours that's before insane. it finds a target. Uh, also, uh, it goes into this. I didn't put it in the episode, but it goes into the fact that like privately, Gates was extremely worried about uh, potentially going to jail for this. Yeah. And was texting people that his uh, fiance was going to leave him. Yeah. So it's like that kind of makes it seem like this maybe would have happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, your Honor, the, the suspect is acting pretty sus. <laughs> <laughs> it continues, Gates has denied paying for sex or engaging in sex with a minor, but Greenberg would go on to be charged with a set of federal crimes and ultimately plead guilty to sex trafficking a child. Other sordid claims have spilled out since. He used to walk around the cloakroom showing people porno of him and his latest girlfriend, one former Republican lawmaker told me. He'd show me a video and I'd say, that's great, Matt. Like, what kind of a reaction do you want? <laughs> Cassidy Hutchinson, the former Trump White House aide, wrote in her memoir that Gates knocked on her cabin door one night during a Camp David retreat and asked Hutchinson to help escort him back to his cabin. Gates has denied this. In many political circles, Gates became untouchable. He was radioactive in Tallahassee, one prominent Florida Republican official told me, and for a while he stopped being invited on Fox News. Around this time, DeSantis cut Gates out of his inner circle. 
His wife, Casey, had told Ron that he was persona non grata, political consultant Peter Short told me. Now, the article leads to the current situation and statements made by former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, but admits that despite the severity of the accusations against him and being removed from the spotlight in a lot of cases, Matt Gates's political strategy is actually working. And insiders say that he is focused on one of two outcomes. Either Trump is reelected and he gets a spot in the next administration, or he runs for governor of Florida. Now, with the election of Johnson, Gates okay. had removed a personal foe, skirted the establishment, and given Trumpism a loud and legitimate microphone. The swamp is on the run, Gates said on War Room. MAGA is ascendant. This had been Gates' plan all along, Steve Bannon told me afterwards. In January 2023, he had been setting the trap. Now he was executing on his vision. Gates had ushered in a new minoritarian vanguardism, Bannon told me proudly. They'll teach this in textbooks. Gates has options going forward. If the former president is reelected in November, Gates could very easily serve in the Trump administration, Charles Johnson told Doing me. Doing what? But most people think Gates' next move is obvious. He'll leave Congress and run for governor of Florida in 2026. Even though he's publicly denied his interest in the job, privately, Gates appears to have made his intentions known. I am 100% confident that this is his plan, one former Florida Republican leader told me. Oh, yeah, because uh, there's term limits for yes. Florida governor. Uh, the, the, so. the rumors are it's either going to be him or Casey DeSantis. That would be interesting. Um, I mean, she, Casey DeSantis is, like, objectively more likable and human than Ron DeSantis. Sure, and she dog walks him all the time. Well, like, the, all the ads that got him elected in Florida, like, featured more of her yeah. than him. She wears the pants in the family. Yeah. She's, uh, she's running the show, probably. Uh, but, yes, this also plays into, they, they get into in the... In the uh, article about how actually going to Congress hurt him personally because he was used to being such a popular yeah. major figure in politics, well, specifically he, in Florida, and he, he got relegated to the, the back bench Yeah, he's like, a, he's like a Tallahassee Nepo kid, yes, right? Yeah, his uh, dad was in politics. His dad sold a company for like half a billion dollars. Yeah, so uh, that company obviously had committed crimes of its own. Of course. Um, but yeah, when he was in the Florida State House, like that was his stomping grounds. Yeah. And, um, yeah, big fish, small pond, small fish, small fish, big pond. And they they go into like that's probably why he decided to lean so heavily into the uh, uh, culture war stuff because yeah. he knew it would elevate his status. Uh, and it, it may have backfired, but it doesn't seem like it because he's so far been pretty much scot free, and is still orchestrating major moves politically, like ousting a House Speaker. Yeah. Well, uh, good luck to you, Florida. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna need it. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> But meanwhile, another member of that specific squad of politicians, Marjorie Taylor Greene, is not sitting idly by and has already threatened to remove the current speaker as well. And apparently, even Trump officials are getting sick of her act, but not Mike Johnson, who has uh, thrown her several bones. Please leave me alone. He, like, he put her on like a committee today. Yeah. So... Um, She's being rewarded. But here's Politico. Trump world isn't happy with Green's threat to throw the House GOP into chaos once again. There's a fear that an election year speakership battle will undercut the party's goals of keeping the House and flipping the White House and Senate. I think it's too late to yeah. start worrying about that. It already fucking happened. 100% distraction, unwanted, and just stupid, one Trump insider told Playbook last night. We're not going to get trapped into this cycle of bullshit that comes out of members of the House. It's fair to say we don't think she's being constructive, another person close with Trump said about Green. The internal fighting is not appreciated by Trump. The former president's orbit is growing weary of the constant motion to vacate threats, that person added. It's no way to run a party. It's no way to run a house. You can't work in that environment. The larger concern is that Johnson's removal would create a power vacuum at a time when unity is essential and coordination between the Trump campaign and the speaker's political operations is starting to tighten. Oh no, if, we, if, if, if that were to happen, the general public would get the sense that Republicans are uh, a fucking mess who can't govern. Yeah. We can't let them get that idea. Yeah. As for the big guy himself, Trump is still, despite 10 or more at this point, attempts to delay, he is still set to stand trial in his criminal hush money case on Monday. Monday of next week, it's coming right up, and it really really seems like this one is actually going to happen as scheduled because like we just said, he's tried everything that he can in order to delay this trial, but the judge has denied all of those attempts. And what makes this trial different is that he could, theoretically, receive jail time for his involvement. But at the very least, 
his appearance in court is mandatory. Not like his other case where he could just, he didn't even have to be there. He yeah. just showed up and acted like he was he had to be there. This yeah. one he actually has to show up for. So yes, he will need to go to New York and stay there or go back and forth every day during the entire thing, which is obviously going to drive him insane. And just to bring everyone up to speed once again, this specific trial is in relation to the falsification of business records in order to cover up the payments made to porn star Stormy Daniels. He faces 34 felony counts in the case, and this is the first of four criminal trials. This one being the only trial that apparently could end before the election in November, which is the exact reason why Trump and his legal team are trying everything that they can to have it postponed. So far, nothing has worked out for them, and it's still currently scheduled to start on Monday, so I'm sure we'll have plenty more info on that as it continues to play out. But you know what you can expect? Non-stop, middle-of-the-night rage posting over on Truth Social for the foreseeable future, despite the gag order. And in fact, I think they made an enhanced gag order because he had already kind of rubbed up against the borders of it previously. Uh Um, well, spo- this is it's great spo- news for true DJT's NASDAQ stock, baby. Which continues to tumble. So no, this it's is, going back up. This is just the shot in the arm DJT needs on the stock market. It all happens on truth. Mm-hmm. Well, just this specific thing. Yes. Anyway, we have some less serious stories coming up in just a second. Also, maybe at least one serious update sure. as well. Regardless, look what time it is. Oh, my God. What? What? What the hell is going on? It's, I can't believe it. It's time for the first sponsored ad read in what seems like months. It's been like oh, two weeks. So yeah, we're. <laughs> it's been a long time though. We're all going to take a second and thank today's sponsors for supporting the show. Folks, it's time to start eating well with Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals so that you can get back to doing what you love this spring. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, and cleaning up. You simply heat and savor the good stuff, and they're tailored to your schedule. You can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility that you need uh, in order to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. And Factor is also celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out on their website and app for Earth Month Eats. That's the badge on the menu that gives their lowest carbon footprint meals. So enjoy those no fuss, no mess meals by heading to factormeals.com slash newsdump50 and using our code newsdump50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code newsdump50 at factormeals.com slash newsdump50 to get 50% off your first box 20% off your next box while that subscription is active. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Okay, back to the news now. Yep. With an absolutely wild update to the, our own hometown Shohei Otani gambling scandal. Mm -hmm. Uh, He has been otonerated, as I say. I'm going to get that on a shirt and wear it to a game. Otonerated. Completely (laughs) otonerated. Uh, yeah, so that's a, there's of course, it's a pretty serious gambling scandal. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest sports has seen uh, in a very yeah, long time. so far. Yeah. Uh, more coming. There's a there's, there's apparently a, an NBA player who was uh, active on a Discord trying to get a certain amount of points alongside his Discord members in order to make their bets uh, completely come to fruition. Uh, oh, no. That's that's another wild story, but uh, let's focus on the billion dollar man. Well, folks, a federal investigation has found far more details against Otani's interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara, than were previously known, and the scale of his gambling debts is actually pretty insane, even more substantial than what was previously known. Mm-hmm. The dude was a full-blown addict who was betting over $10,000 per bet and actually ended up losing over $40 million instead of just the $4 million that was being reported, and actually stole upwards of $16 million from Shohei despite admitting to that far lower amount. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ipe is currently negotiating a guilty plea with authorities, And the info uncovered by the investigation paints a pretty damning picture of this dude who was so deep in the hole that he would do anything to try to climb out, including stealing money from his friend, his boss, and our generation's Babe Ruth. That's right. Here's The Athletic with more. 
According to the complaint, Mizuhara had access to the bank account Otani set up for his baseball salary. Mizuhara impersonated Otani in conversations with bank officials so that he could make wire transfers to his illegal bookmaker. And in 19,000 wagers between December 2021 and January 2024... How many wagers a day is that? A lot. He won, um, amidst those wagers, he won about $142 million gambling and lost about $183 million for a net loss of nearly $41 million. That is even beyond a problem. Yeah. God damn. Otani, in his one news conference on the matter, said he was unaware of Mizuhara's gambling. The complaint supports that claim. The government, in reviewing text conversations between Otani and Mizuhara, found no discussion of gambling and no authorization of the wire transfers from Otani's account to the bookmaker. The complaint says Mizuhara averaged nearly 25 bets per day with an average of $12,800 per wager over a period of nearly two years. <laughs> That's so much gambling. That is... That's ridiculous. The un, it is an uh, unmatched sunk cost fallacy. Holy shit. Uh, it seems doubtful Mizuhara betrayed no outward emotion while riding his gambling roller coaster. His text messages with his bookmaker, as related in the complaint, certainly indicated a level of panic. The U.S. Attorney's Office expects Mizuhara to surrender to federal authorities on Friday, although he will not be asked to enter a plea at that time. A guilty plea might result in Mizuhara receiving a lesser sentence. Now, the text messages between Ipe and the bookie also seem to confirm everything that happened, with Ipe at several points in the relationship outright begging the bookie to work with him on repayment or to extend him more credit for increased gambling even claiming that he couldn't pay the bookie back because of crypto crashing. It's always crypto, isn't it, folks? Uh, at one point, on Christmas, Ipe begged the bookie for an extension, which he was granted because he knew he was good for it, and also, it's Christmas. Uh, the, the bookie <laughs> literally said, you're good, bro, Merry Christmas. Like, levels of degeneracy previously thought impossible. And probably the most damning and honestly scary evidence of all is that the bookie essentially threatened Ipe and Otani at one point after Ipe was already deep in debt, saying in a text to Ipe, Hey Ipe, it's two o'clock on Friday. I don't know why you're not returning my calls. I'm here in Newport Beach and I see, victim A, Otani, walking his dog. I'm just going to go up and talk to him and ask how I can get in touch with you since you're not responding. Please call me back immediately. That is nuts. Hey, I'm uh, out here where your boss lives. I see him. He's out here walking. I mean, he does stand out. He's, he's like yes, a, he's very tall. A se six foot seven Japanese man. You don't see those too often. When I first saw him play down in Anaheim, I was I was shocked at how he's huge a big he was. man. Yes, a lot, like a lot of baseball players, they're fucking. They can be massive or little tiny guys. Yeah. Yeah. The short kings do real well. Yeah. So obviously all the evidence in the world isn't going to stop a lot of baseball fans from calling bullshit on this. And the one thing that we will say is that it's wild that Ipe was able to keep it a secret for so long considering he was actively working alongside Otani while failing at absolutely massive bets and losing tens of thousands of dollars a day. It's crazy. They were, in, like, uh, for work reasons, inseparable. He traveled, yeah. he did everything with him. Like, Meanwhile, he did... he's, like, sweating internally. <laughs> Beep, 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 beep. I lost just uh, lost a hundred thousand. Uh, we'll make that back. anyway. Yeah. So I, I just got to bet more to make it back. If I just double the bet, then I and I win, then I get both of those. So yeah, I mean, look, maybe Otani was actually that naive. I'd like to believe that. Yeah. He does seem like the the sort of athlete that is very single minded on yeah. his athleticism, and uh, you know he's a foreigner in a country that where he doesn't speak the language all that well, you know, he's, he's an outsider and he, he does have to place a lot of trust in other people. Yeah. And maybe he's just a trusting person by nature. I don't know. Not anymore, probably. <laughs> yeah, no, this also, sucks. Also, in this reporting, it goes into like people who are in his orbit and it sounds like, yeah, he apparently sleeps 12 hours a day. And, <laughs> Hell and, yeah. And literally just practices and plays baseball yeah. for the remaining time. That's so cool. Yeah. I love this guy. And I, and I love that he is an L.A. Dodger. And I love that he no longer has snakes in his midst. Yeah. Trying to take him down. Yes. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Anyways, folks, with that out of the way, it's time to get to one of our favorite topics on this show. What product is Fox News mad at <laughs> this week for going woke? You're never going to guess. 
And yeah, this one might surprise you, though at this point I don't think anything could surprise any of us considering they have previously gotten very angry at stuff like the green M&M and Dr. Seuss. But here you go, we regret to inform you that Scrabble has gone woke. You can't even play a nice, relaxing game of Scrabble without the liberals forcing their agenda down everyone's throats, I guess. But wait, you're wondering, how exactly has Scrabble gone woke? Yeah. Are they only accepting words found in the, <laughs> the many critical race theory classes in elementary schools across the country? You try to spell out Latino and they're like, nope, sorry. Latinx. It's, it's Latinx. <laughs> I believe you left the plus off of LGBTQ. <laughs> Negative points. Um, or, you know, it could be something to do with DEI down at the board game factory. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? But no, actually, it's just one version of the game produced for an entirely different continent that includes an additional version of the game. You get both. Mm -hmm. The additional version is more collaborative and less competitive. So therefore, it has gone woke. Oh, it's probably for the Germans. Is it a German version? It is for Europe. Okay. Yeah, yeah the Germans, they love uh, these uh, collaborative, uh, asymmetrical... Uh, that, that's, that, that's why they're the best. Yeah. You don't get Catan. Americans aren't inventing Catan. That's, that, that came from Germany. You His can see like it all Hans over. Hans Klauber or something? Hans Gruber. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He took so, that money he stole from Nakatomi Plaza and he... he invested it in a invested board game in a company. board game empire. So, oh boy, the fact that Scrabble has gone woke surely predicts the end times. They are here, and it is the worst thing that has ever happened to leisure activities. It's so important that Fox News had dedicated an entire segment to it, and also produced another all-time great Chiron slash image combo, which shows Greg Gutfield under the title, Scrabble Goes Woke for Gen Z. I do love that they tied Gen Z into it, too. They haven't, they've already made enough en enemies with millennials. Well, it's just not, you can't. I think we did finally hit the wall with the millennial thing. Like, like we're, Millennials are 40 now. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So we'll spare you most of the insane, pointless chatter about this from the Fox News hosts. But here's some of the info related to this new woke version of the game from Inc., Mattel just announced that it's releasing a new version of Scrabble intended to be more collaborative and less competitive than the original, which its research suggests will appeal to Gen Z players, those soft little pussycats. Used to be the millennials needed the participation trophies, but nope, yeah. we are passing those down because a lot of us are very uh, climate conscious. Uh, we're not buying new ones, we're passing down the participation trophies yeah. or we're melting them down to give to the next generation. By the way, as we've pointed out many times before, and so have other people, um, the uh, generation that's complaining about all this stuff is the one that invented the participation trophy. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And also can't handle losing. Scrabble Together comes with helper cards and allows people to play in teams. In effect, solving a puzzle together, as people frequently do, with Wordle, whose runaway success the company may be hoping to match. Even before anyone has actually seen it, Scrabble Together has been loudly criticized in newspapers, on television, and across the internet. Longtime Scrabble lovers are either dismissing Gen Z as a bunch of whiny babies or lamenting that the need for an easier version of Scrabble portends the downfall of civilization. Or both. I want to point Shut out- Shut up! I had a uh, Monopoly for Kids when I was a kid, and nobody called it woke. Yeah, look at you now. Well, I guess you're right, Elliot. <laughs> it did lasting damage. They put DEI in the Monopoly. Mm. Look what it ha what, look what happened. <laughs> that doesn't even own a single shirt that isn't black. That's right. I do. I just don't wear them on the show. Because <laughs> I, I feel like it would... A anything changing on the show, people like lose their... If we switch spots, people yeah, would lose their minds. If I would. wear a white shirt or I... Uh, God forbid I take my hat off and put my hair up, that's the end. That's the end. I still have hair. Yeah. Uh, it's just I've just gotten used to wearing a hat and now it's part of my fucking... Whole thing. That's your costume. Yeah. Anyway, Kotaku goes into the conservative backlash about this more specifically, adding, In the segment uploaded to YouTube, the host suggests this new version of Scrabble doesn't feature scoring or losing, even though it does, <laughs> and is just another example of how people today are too soft. Or maybe young people are just stupid. They can't seem to make up their minds. They have removed certain words, announced Judge Janine. They banned racist and LGBTQ slurs from the tournament. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> but there are also new words, you know, that the woke generation would be very comfortable with. It, uh, it, what? So is this more about wokeism 
this new Scrabble, or is it about HDHD? I mean, ADHD, and the fact that they need friends, and they need hints, and they can't spell. What the fuck are you talking about, Janine? I would say that it's probably good that they uh, banned <laughs> racist yeah. stuff. I would say it's also good that um, they're, uh, in her words, making it more accessible to have play along with friends, actual friends. Yeah, they, like, they want kids these days to have friends. I mean, I'll say this, like, I love a good board game, but we've all met someone who uh, takes that shit a little too seriously, yeah. and it kind of ruins it for everyone. And sometimes, when you're hanging out, having a few drinks, you want to play something fun. Very casual. Yeah, something casual, like, that's, you see the rise of games like Cards Against Humanity and whatnot. It's like, you know, no one's trying to be the best at Cards Against Humanity. Look, I We're love, just passing the time. I love board games, but I... Anyone, anytime someone pulls one out at a party, I'm like, that better be code names yeah. or something like that because you're going to lose interest. Everyone's going to get fucking angry or lose interest within the rules reading process. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's true. Even, I mean, I wish more people knew the rules of Catan because anytime I ask... Oh, it's a very easy game. But anytime I ask someone, it's like, even this very simple game, I'm like, I don't want to sit here and e explain That's the fucking rules they of this think for 10 into minutes. Like, they put it on the level of like Dungeons and Dragons. It's not. It's not. It's, it's a, a very simple game. game. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, in response, liberal host Jessica Tarlov suggested that removing slurs is something the panel could all agree was a good move. To which the panel replied, not so fast. <sighs> and be careful, Jessica. What? They're trying to slippery slope uh, racist words. <laughs> then it could they, they could ban all words. Yeah. And then there's no scrabble mm -hmm. at all. Did you think about that? You know what I have seen uh, is talking about how kids do play along with it is a lot of teachers uh, playing Wordle in class, and I think it's great. All the kids seem to love it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of literally half the world not being able to enjoy anything because they're too worried that liking anything at all might get them labeled as woke or a leftist sympathizer, sucks to be them because the Fallout TV show is fucking fantastic. I'm not going to spoil it, but there are already complaints online about it being too woke for some viewers because, shockingly, one of the main characters is a woman. Wait, what? And what? This is, of course, in spite of the fact that you can play as a woman in all of the Fallout games. Yeah, I, c I can't verify if the first two have no, that. No, they are, yeah, okay. you can play a female character. So what's the, yeah, okay. Anyways, who fucking cares? She's an incredible, well-known actress, and the show is great, despite, I think there's a few cheesy lines thrown in, but that fits the overall theme of the game anyway, so it's fine. There's a couple scenes People where I'm like- People take this franchise so seriously, and I'm like- It is not. I guess I do too, but like, it is a fundamentally, like, goofy fucking idea. Yeah. And they have fun with it, and goddamn, the, the opening, like, vault parts of the show are, they just nail it. And if you, if you are one of the people who just loves fan service, this has nothing but fan service. Okay. Uh, but it does it in a, in, a, in a fun way, and it definitely doesn't hold back. It is far more violent than I expected it to be, and I expected it to be pretty violent. But one, of the, one of the characters must have gotten that perk that uh, dismembers people when they shoot him. Well, we're not going to get into spoilers. Does it spoilers. have a... Uh... I thought we're not getting into spoilers. Just watch it. It's all of it. Okay. They did the binge release, so you can watch all of the it. The one fan service thing I would like to see is... Um, fuck. The Mysterious Stranger. Mm, okay. Where the perk you get where, like, randomly... A guy like, shows up yeah, and gives you stuff. Every time you shoot someone in VATS, it rolls the dice, and there's a potential that some random fucking, like, yeah. masked cowboy shows up and, like, finishes them off. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that in the show. I don't know how they'd justify it, but... Anyways, uh, it is unfortunate for culture war people who refuse to watch stuff like this because uh, there is, arguably for the first consistent time ever, a video game movie or TV show kind of renaissance happening right now. Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, people love the Mario movie, the Sonic movie, uh, Fallout. There's good stuff being put out now. For, there's been good stuff over the years, randomly, yeah. but uh, this is a very consistent period of time. Uh, the Mortal Kombat movie, despite it not being <laughs> great cinema, at least was just straight up fan service. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, and this is in spite of the fact that video games have been mocked for decades for not having good adaptations. And most of the recent stuff that's being put out is actually really good. Yeah, Last of Us is a good adaptation of a game that I still think, if you want... Like the game is the exact same story. Just mm -hmm. play the fucking game. Yeah. Um, curious how they handle season two. Yeah. Whereas Fallout, that's just like this is an original story in an existing 
uh, setting. Apparently so I, they consulted uh, the writers of the game to... Yeah, I would hope so, because there's a big fucking lore Bible that they gotta be No, 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 but they, they said that the rumor is that there are... They know about Fallout 5 and the storyline, and they have... You don't know what it is, but they've worked in some of the okay. points into this. Okay. But also, not for nothing, uh, we know how chaotic and frustrating this year has already been for people, and it's absolutely going to get crazier the closer we get to the election. Yeah. But there are a surprisingly large amount of really good shows, movies, and games all flooding the market right now, and you would be a fool to pass them up. I just, uh, speaking of stuff that I just watched, I just finally, people beat it into me to watch X-Men 97, blown away. Could not believe how good it is. Amazing. But I also want to point out, I mean, movies, Dune 2, obviously, there's a bunch of great movies out and coming out, but, dude, Helldivers and Bellatro? I have never been gaming. I haven't been gaming this hard since the wow. pandemic, like the the early days of the pandemic. Gaming is back. Held. I have played Helldivers two at least uh, at least one round every night, pretty much. Yeah. But mostly, I'll get on for a couple hours uh, after I'm done working and stuff. It's my favorite multiplayer game, maybe ever. At least it, at least in several several years. It is so good, and constantly updated. Yeah. And they're having a lot of fun with it on social. And great memes coming out of it, but also just a fun game to jump on with some friends and play randomly. Also, Bellatro, a very addictive game that I can't recommend because it will destroy your life. Yeah. In fact, my one of our mutual friends called me a fucking asshole for suggesting it because mm. he's done nothing but play it for the past two days. Uh, you know who else has been playing it? Mm. Phil Larigo. I see him on Steam. Oh, yeah? Phil Larigo is playing Bellatro. It is. Uh, it's a it's a roguelike deck building poker game. It's. For someone who doesn't like all of those things, it sounds confusing, but I swear, like five minutes in, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. It is insane. But there's a, surprisingly, for the first time in a long time, and a lot of this has to do with the pandemic and other things, but there is a flood of great stuff out right now. And we talk shit about there not being stuff to watch or play. Right now is a really good time yeah. to enjoy entertainment. I'm liking the new uh, Ripley show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. People are complaining that it's in black and white because they're fucking cretins. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's actually good. And black and white, you, you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah. Godzilla Minus One, amazing. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Anyways. Finally, today, a late update to a story we thought was definitely over by now. We are truly blessed living here in the City of Angels because we are apparently getting our very own Glasgow Willy Wonka Nightmare Live Experience. Woo! And it will apparently feature the girl who played that sad Oompa Loompa coming all the way over here to reprise the role that made her famous. Yeah. Here's The Guardian with more on this dumb idea that we might actually have to go out of our way to see. In fact, when Elliot came through the door of the studio, I said, guess what? I just got us tickets to the Willy Wonka experience. The infamous Willy's Chocolate Experience staged in Glasgow, which prompted angry parents to call police, inspired dozens of memes on the internet, dozens, <laughs> and even got a mention in the House of Commons, is to be recreated in Los Angeles. Kirsty Patterson, 29, an actor and yoga teacher, became a viral hit after pictures emerged of her as a sad Oompa Loompa at the experience. But now she is set to be the star of the California event, with the comedian Zach Galifianakis also reportedly linked to the Willie's Chocolate Experience LA event on the Eventbrite website. The event is described as tongue-in-cheek. Attenders are invited to step into a world of pure imagination at Willie's Chocolate Experience Los Angeles as chocolate memes come to life at a nondescript warehouse in California where two free jelly beans will be given per $44 ticket on April 28th. Patterson is billed as a notorious Scottish Oompa Loompa and will take part in a Q&A session. Describing the opportunity as a modern day fairy tale, she told the Daily Record the American version of the event had adopted the name, but this was done as a joke. I didn't really expect to end up in the USA or to go as big as this because the USA is on a different level, Patterson said. I've not been to America before. As a trained actor, it's really exciting for me to go over there. Guests will be welcome to a plethora of enchanting attractions in downtown LA, including DJ sets and film screenings, as well as getting to meet Patterson, who is described as having a heart of gold. <laughs> Galifianakis is tipped on the Eventbrite listing to host the Q&A session with fellow comic Nathan Fielder. So, at the very least, our ticket is getting us four jelly beans total. Yeah. And a Q&A with Nathan Fielder and Zach Galifianakis and arguably the bigger star, Kirsty Patterson, the Oompa Loompa. Oh, baby. We got to get her picture with the Oompa Loompa. Yeah. One for the record I books. wonder who's going to be the unknown. I would hope that they'd fly the unknown out, but it'll probably be... 
The unknown is a teenager, so that might complicate things. They'll have to get an adult. Um, the unknown. Maybe if Benny Safdie still has that hair yeah. from the curse, he could be the unknown. I was going to say Neil Hamburger, but uh, that's also a good choice. <laughs> He'd be great as well. I'm, there's probably going to be some fucking crazy appearances if if, yeah. if Nathan Fielder and Zach Galifianakis are actually involved. Also, I hope that girl, like, an agent, like, talks to her and gets her in something out here. Yeah. That would be a nice gesture. Yeah. Because as we said, we should she should at least be in the horror movie version of this that is apparently still coming out. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of News Dump. We do have weekly weird news coming up for you very very soon. But in the meantime, make sure you you smash it, you you lovingly caress it, you press it at the very least, the like button. Hit the like button right now. We're waiting. Also, make sure you're subscribed. If you feel like it, hit the join button. But also, make sure you watch our most recent videos. We've got more Elon than you can ever want over on Tech News Day, and also a video about people staring directly into the sun. Check both of those out, and we'll see you soon for Weekly Weird News. Bye. Bye.